Okay, for the next uh, box drop jump training video, uh, what I would, and now we're talking about the mid and the top range. Uh, I think these can be bumped together in regards to the methods that can be used. So remember, you're jumping down, landing, and then jumping onto a box, um, dropping off one to cause a rebound effect. So for the mid and the top range, we're doing them both together and top. Um, again, I think the pause can be used for both of them. The pause, definitely. The, the rebound then, um, as I talked about, you, you may not want to do the metabolic one just because there's better effective means of, than using this concept. I would definitely consider the thrust method at some point. Now you're talking thrust. Um, three and then for the ASFM which to me is the most effective method so the question becomes remember the thrust with here is you're dropping below the range of motion and then you're, you're waiting to really hammer that movement at these points so um, when would that be most effective I think I, I drew it up correctly in my opinion now there may be reasons that you're not going to do that and I've, I've screwed everything up that I've ever wrote on this board. And the only reason I'm sharing it with you because I think I got it more right the next time. So this pause, pause in those positions, land and pause and jump. The rebound method, we've talked about that numerous times. So land in there and then coming out. And then what you would do is you would land, come down deeper and explode up and accelerate through. Um, the reason I put the thrust in front of here is because I think you get a, a little bit of more uh, reactiveness training and the tissue training, which will then help accelerate the thrust method. Now you could flip those and here's what I would do in that sense. I would probably do flip these early in the off season. So if I'm gonna do this sequencing and I'm gonna do a, two weeks of pause, two weeks of rebound, two weeks of thrust, two weeks of ASS, FSM, early in the training, I would flip those and do thrust first, and then the rebound, and then later in the, the off season, I would probably do rebound and thrust. Now look, that's just my suggestion. If you find another reason or a better way to flip those in different times, that's great. Um, but that's just what I would do on the box drops jump for the top two mid ranges, uh, uh, range of motions in the triphasic range plyometrics. So I think I'm about five or six videos deep into this. You can see how this becomes endless in the type of, of training methods and the type of variables that you can make for your athletes. And what I would suggest is pick plyometrics that work, but create variations within your program so that your athletes have a, whether you test them to figure this out or whether they, uh, you just, take your intuition, because I'll, I'll be honest with you, if you know your athletes well enough, in my opinion, my intuition would tell me I'm right with most of these. As I look through, when I test my athletes to find out exactly what I need to do, whether it's pause, rebound, thrust, AFSM, I'm usually guessing right. But again, it's easy for me, I've been in this field for 20 years. The hard part is, um, I think as a staff, I would just set everybody down and say, hey, does this seem right? Or what are we gonna do with this kid? Label it out. And then that gives a little bit of kid, even though somebody, you're doing almost maybe the, the same program with everybody. This is just some good sports specific movements and things that can be done for your athletes to make them feel, oh, maybe make them feel special because everybody needs to feel special nowadays. Um, so that's, that's an example of all three ranges of motion to the box drop jump. And in closing, I think you can just add any of these combinations, but that's the meat and potatoes of programming for that particular uh, movement.